Welcome to the InfoGov Hot Seat Vodcast, featuring candid interviews with practitioners, consultants, and solution providers on hot topics in the information governance industry. Here's your host, Jim Merrifield. Hello and welcome to the InfoGov Hot Seat. I'm your host, Jim Merrifield, and with me today is Kevin Benedicto at Redgrave. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me, Jim. Yeah, it's great to have you on the hot seat. I know we saw each other briefly at InfoCon, uh, so it was nice to, nice to meet you in person. Nice to see you again virtually here. We'll get to the conference in a moment, but before we, we get to that subject, would you like to provide a brief introduction of yourself, your current role, and one fun fact about yourself? Yeah. Absolutely. Again, I, I want to start off by thanking you for having me. I feel like I'm in the presence of a celebrity because at InfoCon, you know, you're all, you're always up at the lectern surrounded by all the fancy people. <laughs> a little starstruck here. But yeah, thank you so much for having me. My name is Kevin Benedicto and I'm counsel at Redgrave LLP, which is a boutique law firm that practices exclusively in the area of information law. So we like to say we're a law firm that exists at the intersection of law and technology. I think we is also exactly where Arma and where Infocon live. So I think it's a really good match that we're always very involved. Um, and so in my practice, I work uh, on the advisory side for information governance, for data privacy. I do cybersecurity work. I'm developing, helping develop Redgrave's artificial intelligence law practice. Uh, and also I'm a litigator by training. Uh, so it was you know, definitely hopefully able to provide some wisdom from that experience at, uh, at InfoCon. Uh, a fun fact about myself, when I was a younger lawyer, I got pretty involved in some pro bono cases related to criminal justice and police reform in San Francisco, which is where I live. And actually in 2022, I was appointed to the San Francisco Police Commission. And so in addition to being a, a practicing litigator at Redgrave, I also served as a commissioner for the San Francisco Police Commission. Awesome. Well, congrats. Yeah, that's great. Great background. I know uh, prior to Redgrave, right, you were at, at Morgan in-house at a, at a, as, a, as a lawyer. So now you're on the Redgrave red side, being able to service clients. And uh, and again, thanks for sharing that fun fact. So let's talk about InfoCon. I know your company recently attended InfoCon in Houston. There are probably lots of takeaways. Uh, we've had some time to kind of, I guess, uh, settle in after InfoCon. But uh, what were your key takeaways, Kevin, from the event? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Redgrave was so privileged to get to attend InfoCon. We worked closely with organizers and sort of uh, were able to help a lot with the legal track. So for any of your uh, viewers that attended the legal track, we had seven different panels that Redgrave organized on the legal track. I spoke on three of them um, on a variety of topics from defensible disposition to uh, tips for Microsoft 365 and Copilot and a lot of AI related topics, as well as an overview of uh, U.S. privacy law developments and international privacy law developments as well. So a real kind of covered the waterfront of the legal of the legal track of the conference. And there were a number of takeaways that I think it really struck out to me. And now that we're a little bit out, I think one just kind of being there at the legal track is that so many people have questions about the shifting legal landscapes in the U.S. and internationally. We don't always have the answers because it's shifting so fast. I mean, the story I shared in one of our presentations was 19, California was the only U.S. state with a comprehensive data security and privacy law, and now there are 20 states that have it, and uh, with more on the way. And so you're really seeing this shifting legal landscape, and there are so many questions. That are, our panels had so many questions. How do I comply with all these shifting requirements? How do I deal with the fact that Washington requires this and Texas requires this and our company is global. You know, so many of the, of the ARM attendees are. So I think one is there are many legal questions about that landscape. A few others, I really think that IG and good records management is more important than ever with the rise of AI. I know we're going to talk about AI a little bit later. I think it's on the front of mind for pretty much every company these days, whether you are deploying it, whether you're thinking of how can you leverage the data you have to be valuable to a, as a training set, whether it's how are you streamlining your own operations with artificial intelligence. It's really, and it really is that um, at the moment where good information governance, good records management is more important than ever. And then I'll go with, with two more. One, I'm going to steal from my co-panelist, Jennifer Brown at Genesis, who have a great line that said, we are as diverse as our data, which I think really resonated with me throughout the conference where you know, we had huge multinational companies there who have legal departments and IG departments bigger than my law firm. And we had 
tiny companies where the, 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 the person there is solely responsible for all IG and all RM and probably also <laughs> compliance and audit and so many other functions. We have people that operate in two states and they people that operate internationally. And so I think uh, some people have just traditional paper records and some now have AI training data or biometric data. There's no one size all fit solution because we are really as diverse as our data. Um, and the last one really is that when you look at, when you tie all these things together, when you look at the shifting landscape, when you look at the rise of AI, when you look at how diverse the data set and the companies are, I think we're on the real precipice of a sea change driven a lot by the rise of AI. But I think that we're going to look back at this as a real inflection point on how IG and RM is looked at within organizations and within the industry. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, those are some excellent takeaways. Of course, AI has taken center stage. And I know you mentioned in the outset that uh, you're focused at, at Redgrave around deploying an AI practice. Uh, so there were lots of discussions around AI. I'm sure you were central to those conversations. And I do agree with you that IG professionals need to really stay ahead of the curve. So what advice do you have for IG professionals that are listening to this podcast? What should we be doing or focused on? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a great question. I mean, I think by my count, more than 80% of the panels at at Infocon either were directly about AI or were not, but at some point had in a slide on a reference something about AI because it really touches every part of the of of our industry and really of all industries. I spoke recently at an event about AI for the Santa Clara County Bar Association in California, and the, we talked about how no company is immune to AI in some fashion. Even if you're the most analog, if you're a company that makes silverware and it's a factory, it's about as analog as you can get, it's likely that your hiring process is now involving an algorithmic decision-making tool because you, you use a provider for that. You know, if you're, you might have a customer service chat bot that is ingesting information and is using AI, there's no industry or company that won't be affected one way or another. Even the choice to not adopt AI tools will begin to have its own implications. So even for companies that don't adopt tools, that choice itself it involves having to weigh and, and, and look at your tools. So it really is, really is everywhere. So I think that's one thing is that if you think that you're, I think the same is true for um, data security and cybersecurity and then those sort of laws. If you think that you're not part of that, you need to reassess and look at your things more closely. Uh, for example, we, we had um, a speaker, Steve Golden, who's at Sony Pictures Entertainment. And one piece of IG that he's responsible for that is kind of non-traditional is closed circuit TV footage from their back lots and from their, you wouldn't think of that as, oh, I'm capturing data, but under a lot of these new state and international laws is that that's likeness data. Is that potentially, you know, like what are you collecting? What are the implications? So I think that that's one piece of advice is that you're, you're in it. There's no opting out. Um, a couple other things I think I, I would give for advice is something one of the panelists said at, at a panel that we weren't part of, but I attended, I think I've been repeating nonstop, which is that the foundation to a successful AI deployment is good information governance and records management. The, you know, you're only as good as your data. And if you're not, if you don't have good hygiene, good security, good labeling, making sure you're like, then you're opening yourself up to your AI both being not as effective and to potential risks if it, if it goes wrong. There was a, a case study we talked about, uh, which is sort of the nightmare scenario that a lot of lawyers have used in subsequent examples where one company was using a non-secured version of an AI tool and like just asking for tips on how to spruce up a presentation, but in that process, upload that presentation, not realizing, you know, good, good IG <laughs> hygiene halfway around the world, a competitor was saying, give me some presentation ideas to the same AI tool. And it spit out the competitor's presentation complete with confidentiality labels and corporate labels uh, because they were not using a secured environment and doing good data labeling. And so AI will not be successful and exposes your company to huge risks unless you have good IG and good records management, because that's so, so, so important. Another thing that we'd heard consistently from a lot of people at the conference is it can be really hard for folks in the information governance teams to get attention from their, from their higher ups, whether you're at a law firm or a company, it's never the top priority of anyone but you. AI often is. And so AI can be an opportunity, excuse me, for information governance and record management professionals to get that attention. You know, you know, if you sit under, you know, the CFO or, you know, might not get their attention for, oh, we need to upgrade our labeling, we need to upgrade our sensitivity. 
I bet they have an AI task force that's getting a lot of attention. It's a way to get a seat at the table because I think it's so important. Uh, and one challenge I think we heard across was how to, the number of different ways, whether it was at panels or at the informal events at the HODA, we would get asked, like, how does IG get a seat at the table? And I think one way is using AI as that entry point uh, because, and making that pitch that it's not going to work well or it's going to expose you to risk unless we're at the table making sure we're managing, which is where I think my uh, other piece of advice is don't run from it. Like I said, there's no getting a, around it. I think as information governance professionals, as lawyers, we're inclined to be more skeptical than maybe our business side folks that just want to be like, oh, I saw on the news, everyone's using ChatGPT. We should be using that everywhere. And so I think there's an instinct to like pump the brakes. And so I think it's about that balance. Like don't run from it because it's going to be like pushing against the sea. Uh, you can't get away from it, but also don't go in uncritically, figure out how it fits into your org, how best to use it as a tool, how to use it to get to see the table and how to mitigate risk. Um, and the last piece of advice, which, you know, is, is somewhat selfish, but get a good lawyer. <laughs> there are uncharted legal risks that we're all learning. There are courts that are imposing new rules on lawyers using AI in their courts. There are state bars that are considering, you know, new rules on that. There, there are, you know, Delaware, which you know, is the home of America's corporation, just considering how it regulates AI. And so law firms and lawyers are, are, are all learning it too, but you need to find, find a partner in an organ, in a law firm, in, in your legal department that can help walk through these thorny issues. Yeah, no, that's excellent advice. I mean, who doesn't want to talk about AI these days? I think every firm, corporation has an AI task force. And most of the time, the IG folks are usually responsible for policy within the firm, right? Maybe you know, I see a lot of organizations developing a, a Gen AI usage policy to have. So maybe that's some inroads there for the, the IG professional. But you, you struck a, a chord with me. I think it's it's critically important for practitioners and business partners and even on the corporate side i guess you could say law firms corporations which are clients and business partners to to kind of work together uh, to better understand gen ai because you go to these conferences and all three of those attendees are represented Mm -hmm. And it's a great opportunity. I think, you know, any conference, you know, I attend because I'm very grateful that, um, you know, my firm is very supportive. But I take ownership. You know, every conference I attend, I come back and I, I say, listen, this is what was talked about. And this is what I think we can we can implement into our strategic plan. This is what I think. And, and, and you know, our CIO and I, we work really close together, GC as well. And I think it's important. You know, I guess the message there is is if we're talking about Infocon, I think you you mentioned it as well. It's just you need to, to come back and, and bring some takeaways right to, to your organization and some action items because, you know, we go to these three-day conferences. We have a lot of fun. We do. <laughs> but we also learn a lot. And uh, there are some key takeaways from panels and, and, and speakers like yourself that if we don't take advantage of those takeaways and those that information, then what's the point really? I hate to say it like this. Like, what's the point of of going to these events. Like we love seeing one another, but there's practical examples and tips that us as practitioners can take back to our organizations. I think, you know, both of us agree that, you know, there's, there's, there's so many nuggets of information. I, I know, uh, you know, thanks, thanks to you and even ILTA that put on that legal track. The sessions were amazing. I know the, there's a lot of tracks at, at ARMA, at, at Infocon. And I think the only ones that make sense to me are the legal ones just because I've probably lived in legal for 20 years. So I'm really appreciative of what you and, and ILTA do to kind of support those tracks. So, so thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, look, Kevin, I know we've talked about a lot here, um, especially around Infocon and AI and information governance professionals, but is there anything else that you'd like to share that we haven't covered yet with the audience? Yeah, I mean, I think that one, like you said, I think the real value of these conferences is getting to have that networking and have that talk to people you otherwise wouldn't bump into. And I think one thing, you know, oftentimes when I was on the law firm side, a lot of the conferences I would tend to were really just lawyers, which don't get me wrong, there's a lot of value in getting a lot of lawyers in a room, um, a lot of issues with that too. But I think what's nice about Infocon is that it's such a mix of IG professionals from so many diverse legal functions, compliance functions, audit functions. And so I think that's how you get those kind of innovative options when you're doing things like writing a Gen AI policy, which we're helping a lot of our clients do. Um, I, I think the next, you know, three to five years is going to be really 
fascinating because AI is going to continue to take off. You're going to see more adoption and you're also going to see more issues come up. That example I gave about that presentation, you had, you had a lawyer in New York, uh, Hyperval got sanctioned for using chat GPT to make up cases. So you're going to see AI make mistakes, high profile, expensive, bad mistakes, no matter what your AI tool of choice is, that's going to happen. And so I think that there are a lot of risks in the next five years and also a lot of opportunities for information governance to get to limit those and to get to play a bigger role in their organization. So I think that's one thing I, I think is a is an overall takeaway. I think, like I said, talk to legal, make sure you're all puzzling through these issues together and getting someone that can, can help work on these issues because we're all learning them. Like, you know, it's not just an opportunity to learn about how the law is changing and how your policies are changing. It's, a, it's an opportunity to shape it. Like what the laws and policies are on AI in the next five years will be shaped by the people that practice in this space. So the people at Infocon are going to help shape that, whether it's policy of their companies or regulations or legislation, that's going to be shaped by the people at that forefront. We're getting, which is again, like scary, but also a great opportunity to get to actually make that frontier that other people are going to follow. Um, and I think the last thing is I, I really think that when looking at all of these changes, you, you see them as a tool with with risks and opportunities. I think one analogy. So one of my favorite presentations, I'm biased because I was I was on it, but we, we did a panel which was called uh, Lessons Learned from the Flight of Icarus, uh, Successfully Navigating Copilot. And the whole presentation was drawing parallels between the Greek myth of Icarus, you know, who flew too close to the sun with wax wings. Uh, and an adoption of AI and what the similarities were about hubris, about safeguards and using tools and about building things and using them responsibly. And I think like that really was, uh, it was sort of a funny idea that one of our partners proposed, Martin Tully, but ended up being, I think, a really resonant, uh, from the feedback, a really resonant thing. I think that's one way that I hope your, your viewers can think about AI. It's an incredible tool. It can allow you to fly and do things that you've never done before, do them faster overcome obstacles but if not deployed responsibly you know those wings will melt and you're fine and you'll find yourself falling without a net so that's sort of my my takeaway love the analogy love the illustration i couldn't have said it any better i'm sure i was a seventh and eighth grade teacher before being a lawyer so i'm always happy to talk about greek mythology there you go awesome see we learned another fun fact about you there you go yeah, so we'll we'll definitely I'm sure have a part two at some point in 2025. Uh, but thanks so much, Kevin, for for sharing your expertise, your uh, insights from Infocon, and thanks again for your support of uh, you know being on the podcast here, and of course Arma in general. Um, we really really thank you. Um, if you'd like to be a guest on the Infogov Hot Seat, like Kevin here, all you need to do is submit your information through our website, infogovhotseat.com. And uh, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much, Jim. Take care. Thank you for listening to another episode of the InfoGov Hot Seat. Follow us on Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and LinkedIn. Check out our main website at infogovhotseat.com to view our latest episodes and much more.